Please give a round of applause to congratulate Jay-Z Hollywood for his great honor in welcoming him to the podium. tried to spend some time to, to, to understand what this what this really means. What it means to be in the Cal Across Hall of Fame with such amazing company. Uh, and, and Coach Wayne said a lot about it. I, I want to give my version of that um, with a few words here. Uh, I want to make sure I thank everybody who's here, first of all, who put this event together. The Hall of Fame committee, uh, all of our friends who traveled from so far, and my family, who Alex mentioned here. I want to call out a couple more folks here. My mom is here. She's an amazing storyteller, and I want to tell some stories tonight, okay? My stepfather is here. He's the historian, and I want to talk a little bit about history tonight. I won't spend too long, but I do have some stuff I want to say. My father is here tonight. He's a psychiatrist. <laughs> a master of describing control substances that can alter the mind. That's part of the Calabas story. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that. My stepmother is not here tonight. She passed in September, um, but she was someone who meant so much to me. She taught me how to keep memories and share those memories, and I do want to share some of those memories tonight. My in-laws are here from Italy, Tony and Geraldine, and my sister-in-law, Stefania, so I want to make sure that uh, I thank them for being here. And of course, my group is here. talk tonight, but I, I might overrule them a little bit on that. Um, this is a real homecoming for me. I grew up in Berkeley. I went to Berkeley High School. I went to Cal, obviously. I live in Los Angeles, but coming home to this beautiful place, Wayne mentioned it, but it truly is something special. And I want to I wanna get to why that is extremely unique for this community in a moment. Um, I first started playing lacrosse really learning about lacrosse the summer between 7th and 8th grade. I was at Boy Scout camp, and a guy named Dave Pactich, who went to Berkeley High, he was four years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Around the campfire, he told these amazing stories of the Berkeley High lacrosse team. This band of wild athletes, these crazy, crazy lacrosse players, many of whom were back in that table right there. And he told this story about this Northern California championship game against Bishop O'Dowd. 1989, and Berkeley High beat Bishop O'Dowd in overtime. Boom! <laughs> Many of you know Ryan, you know the story of Ryan. And Ryan scored eight goals in that game, including the overtime victory. He literally caught the ball, stole it from a, on a ride, and dove and scored the game winner to, to, to stand up behind the championship. And I've watched that tape. I have that tape. It's on my YouTube channel if anybody wants to watch it. This story, this myth, this legend, of the Berkeley High lacrosse team, and especially Ryan Taylor, changed my world. I was a kid who was shuttling between parents' houses in middle school. I was a slightly above average athletic ability. <laughs> How about the shoulder? How about how many times have we put your shoulder back in? Is this an interactive conversation? <laughs> Alright, let's think an interactive. I needed something to grasp onto when I was uh, young, like many people did, and lacrosse was something I could really sink my teeth into. And the vision of what Berkeley High offered and Ryan Taylor as an inspiration was something that I could see as a path that I wanted. 
So I went to Berkeley High, and I played hard, and I did my best, and we were as good as we could be, and we battled all of the teams that many of you are familiar with and went to schools with, and we did great. But my senior year, and I was trying to think of, of a really positive version of the story, one positive version of it, but I, I'm hoping to take two negatives. Like a dad joke here. But my, my senior year, <laughs> Ryan Taylor took his own life, as many of us know. And from that moment on, I realized that I had to figure it out myself. Ryan had gone back east, he had followed a path that I wanted to follow, and I had planned to go back east and play at Duke. I didn't get into Duke. But luckily, I got into my safety school. I got into Cal. <laughs> So when I started at Cal, I realized I had to find my own path. I had to figure it out for myself. And I didn't know what that meant, but I knew that I was surrounded by an amazing group of veterans who were at Cal. Guys like Kevin Flynn and uh, Kevin Duffy and, and, and uh, Terry Flynn, Terry Flynn and Mario Nea. And Andy Barnes, our goalie, amazing seniors who were there, Spencer Young, Mike Ridley. And we had an amazing recruiting class. We had an incredible freshman class. Guys like Alex Mast, who I played against in high school. He didn't know me, I knew him. Justin Stevens, Ned Topham, JP Harbor. Yeah. Amazing players. And so we were really good freshman year. We were really good. Uh, we beat everybody. Uh, we beat Whittier at home, we stopped yeah. him. And then we went back east, and we beat Holy Cross. As a bunch of West Coast kids going back east and beating those East Coast kids, that was a, a huge achievement. And then the next day, we played the day after St. Pat, Patrick's Day. We'd been out all night drinking at the Goodwill Hunting Bar, and you know, we found ourselves on the field, and we got beat by Boston College. But that was okay, that was okay. We came back and we played in the WCLL championship. And uh, I want to show you just a, a, this picture here that's, that's up there. It actually comes from the Daily Cal. I have a, uh, a little excerpt here from, from May 2nd, 1995. That's the, the picture of me there. And the headline here, which I think is hilarious, Lax waxes a pair in defense of title. <laughs> right? <laughs> Daily Cal. <laughs> Bears down Chapman and UCSB. So we won the championship, but the path to get there was pretty wild. And there's a moment I want to talk about. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read this for a second. Who says Cal Sports men's teams can't win championships? Major sports teams have fumbled through well publicized, disappointing seasons. The men's lacrosse team, Cal's best kept secret, has taken the national club title. Not exactly the national club title back then, but for the second consecutive year. The Bears won the Western Collegiate Lacrosse League Championship with a thrilling overtime victory over Chapman in the semifinal and a domination of UC Santa Barbara in Sunday's final. What happened in that Chapman game, I think, is really important to talk about. We were losing badly in that game, in that semifinal game. And we had clawed our way back. With about 30 seconds to go, Coach Pajessi calls a timeout. We're down 10 to 9. Now, I'll just give you the spoiler. Obviously, we end up beating Chapman in overtime because a guy named Pete Flannery, who I don't think is here tonight, scored an amazing goal. But to tie that game up with 30 seconds left, Coach called the timeout. And Pete, I don't know if you remember this, but I certainly do. <laughs> Coach calls a timeout, and he, 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 you know, as a group of freshmen, we were all freaked out. What's going to happen here? How are we going to get past this? Coach calls a timeout, and he probably gave some amazing Braveheart-esque speech to fire us up, get everybody excited. And, and he may have, but the reality was is that none of us were really listening. I wasn't. The conversation we were having was, are we going to eat our shrooms tonight? <laughs> or are we going to wait the next day? <laughs> Somehow, at the timeout, I got the ball, and I drove up the crease, 
Justin Stevens was wide open on the crease, like hitting the ball, he ties it up. We end up winning the game in overtime. We beat Santa Barbara in the championship, and we have our shrooms after the championship game, as you should have been before. And it was an amazing experience. It was an amazing experience, amazing experience. And so for a couple years, we were riding that high. I think for myself, I, I, I definitely enjoyed that whole experience all the way through to senior year. So I do want to give a little story about senior year. Now, you, you may have heard about the uh, championship game, the national championship game where we won 16 to 15 in overtime over BYU, right? That was an amazing game in St. Louis, but it actually it turns out that was the second best 16 to 15 overtime victory in a championship game that year. Because a few weeks earlier, we had beat Whittier, our arch rivals, up in Stockton in the WCLL championship. And that WCLL championship game was the most meaningful for me, and I think for a lot of guys, because it really was the rival. The BYU guys, they were, they were nice guys, right? It was great to win the national championship, but they were, they were nice guys. They were grown men, frankly. <laughs> kids were running around on the side. But they were very polite. But the Whittier guys, they were Neanderthals. They were East Coast, just, just rough kids. And we always wanted to beat them. And it was a real, real rivalry. And that game was an overtime victory. And I just want to, I want to do a little play-by-play -play of how that overtime win actually went down. So it was 15 to 15. It was an extremely close game, back and forth, leads changing. 15 to 15, Coach Joe Proud calls a timeout, okay? And he says, all right guys, we're gonna run the shoot the moon play. This was the play that we had in our back pocket when we needed a goal. When we needed a goal, we put our man up team out there, essentially on a face off, we run Tyler Price with a long pole on the face off, and we were gonna get the ball no matter what. So we had JP, we had myself, we had Justin Stevens on attack, we had Al Mast on the wing, we had Kevin, Chris, one of you guys. We're gonna move on the wing and get Tyler took the long stick. They were interchangeable. We don't know which one is which. They're both fantastic. They're both gonna be in this Sunday. And we got our long sticks hanging back and our amazing goalie Robbie Warner in the cage. Tyler wins the faceoff. He pops it out to Alex on the wing. Alex goes down, scoops it up. He gets an ice pick check in the head from a winger guy. Drops the ball, picks it back up. No call. No! <laughs> Where's my refs? The play, shoot the moon, is essentially a mixing of high crease picks for the moons. Everybody's coming off it. It all starts and initiates with Alex. Because Alex is the man, everybody on the other team knows that Alex is going to the goal to goal. So he's sort of the deep boy, he's got to initiate the play from up top. The idea is get Alex the ball and let everybody set up on the play. But Alex has something else in mind. <laughs> he's got that patented Alex mast, you know, look on his face. He's going to the goal, he's frothing it from out. He drives down with his right, switches to his left, takes a shot. Right, everyone's like, oh jeez, all right, but you gotta let Alex shoot. <laughs> Ball squirts out, I pick it up behind, pull it over, okay, let's set it up, set it up, throw it back up to Alex. Alex immediately shoots it again. <laughs> Everybody's yelling, shoot the moon, shoot the moon. This time it goes over the cage, Justin Stephen backs it up. Justin takes it up to the right side, he's pulling it up, and throws it to, to, to Kevin Moon, I'm gonna go there. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a little blooper pass. Kev drops it, picks it back up, finally gets it around, back down to me. Finally, I said, Alex, okay, on the field. Let's go, shoot the moon. Give it up to Alex. He drives right, his defender sloshes off him. Moon circle, Neddy T, Ned Topham, pops up. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. Alex beats him the ball. And Ned scores it, we win, we go to the Everything in St. Louis was just a walk in the park. The indignity of all indignities, however, was when we got on the bus and headed back down to Berkeley from Stockton. We were having a good time, doing keg stands in the back of the bus, probably doing keg stands on the top of the bus. We stop at In and Out, right? And lo and behold, in front of us, the entire radio team is in the line. I 
soon as our bus door opens and we all pile out, the Whittier guys look up at us and they basically just step out of the way. And <laughs> I'm gonna close this with something a little, little crazy here, maybe, okay? I'm gonna read a, a poem that my mom wrote. And the reason I'm gonna read this poem is because I actually think it tells the answer, helps answer what this means to me. This is a poem, and mom, I'm sorry I didn't tell you ahead of time I was gonna do this, but <laughs> it's a poem that my mom wrote in 2005, and it's called Lock and Key. I'm just going to read a little bit of it. But it's about when my mom went to visit her mom's house in Vermont after many years, and it had been empty. And the fact that she could get into the house and observe what had happened with nothing changing the house is sort of the, the idea. So let me, let me read a, a few lines from this, if you guys can indulge me. Travel a thousand miles or more. Take out a key, open the door. A lamp on the table, a cloth on the table. The rooms are chilly, but it's all there. See what is possible in the absence of war. My key turns in the lock because we agreed that this key should turn the lock. The agreement, not the key, opens the door. Not the key, but the agreement. We who place the lock agree with you that this is the key. So to me, this homecoming, this room, this house, this shelter from a storm outside, these coaches, these refs, these players, these guys who built this, this agreement that we have that is Cal Cross, that is the key. That's what this means to me. And I just want to thank you all for allowing me to have this key. And let's share this key and keep this agreement. Thank you. Jason!